thanks again for your, your time today. So yeah, I'll go through now the, the new features and enhancements in um, Amberg Tunnel 2.22 and Amberg Navigator 1.22. So starting off with Amberg Tunnel, we have a new stored points editor. So let's take a look at that now. Just a little background. So in Amberg Navigator, we have many tasks that have a store button. So this is the button you see here. This particular example is the, the rock bowl task. Uh, but this store button is available in many of our tasks. Uh, we have, I think, 19 at least tasks, uh, such as these ones you see here, where we can save a, a single point measurement. Now, previously, to obtain this information from the data collector from the tablet, you needed to manually copy the CSV file from the tablet. The data was organized by navigator task type, but you needed to manually retrieve this information and take it back to the office, and then you could work with the data there. Now we've improved the process uh, much. It's a much better process now. We now treat the stored points in the same way that we treat measured profiles and uh, captured scans and photographs. The data is automatically transferred to the office either by USB using the, the project file, the navig.nav2at file, that will contain everything in one single file, or via Navigator Cloud Sync. So if you use the Cloud Sync service, you just synchronize on the tablet and it will appear in the office project. In Amberg Tunnel, we now have, this is our first implementation of the stored points editor. The editor is organized in the same manner as the other measurement editors. So the measured profile editor, the point cloud editor, and the images. It's organized by construction stage. Uh, you will have one editor in each construction stage you create. And the data that you capture, you will find it in the relevant construction stage. So you will see this new node in the project tree. We have a, a link button, so we, Amber Tunnel knows which navigator task definition each point belongs to, so you can quickly take a shortcut to that task definition using this button here. We can export the data to CSV at the moment, and that will export everything you see here in the table, all of these columns, and in addition, it will export uh, attribute information, so such as the deviations uh, that you store the points. So, uh, the, the, and these can be good for stakeout uh, reports afterwards. And we also have the properties windows. It, you cannot see it here, but a little further down, if I scroll down, is contains additional information such as the forwards, backwards, up and down deviations that were stored at the time that the, that the point was recorded. So this is implementation one. We plan to do much more with this in uh, the upcoming releases, uh, but we now have a full uh, field to finish uh, workflow for stored points. So that's the new stored points editor. The next uh, new feature or enhancement we've created is to be able to derive a horizontal alignment from a DXF import. So the ideal scenario, I think, for, for everybody is to have a land XML file and simply to import that directly into Hamburg Tunnel. In some cases, users just have a DXF file. We now support the importing of DXF. The horizontal alignment node, it's imported in the same manner as importing a land XML or defining the, uh, the definition manually. If you import a 2D or a 3D DXF, it will take the 2D information. You also can specify a start stationing range because a DXF does not contain stationing information. Uh, the user needs to enter this information here on import. And there's one uh, specific feature. Sometimes DXF that customers receive, it's it contains a sequence of small straight elements equi equivalent, and this typically indicates that the, at some point the, the file came from a, a file that actually had plot definitions. 
And as DXF does not support Clodoid, um, therefore it's, it's not available to import here. But Amberg Tunnel will look at this, uh, analyze the file, and it will identify if the correct information is there to reconvert a sequence of straight elements back into a clotoid. If these conditions are not met, the, you will not be able to do it because the, the button will be grayed out. If it detects that you can carry out such an operation, you can optionally do it here. Okay, so that is the horizontal alignment from DXF. The next one is a small change, but it uh, will hopefully make navigating in Amberg Tunnel a little bit easier. We have uh, reorganized some parent nodes in the project tree. Again, small change. This applies to uh, the geotechnics, to navigator, and also to inspection. So previously, this information, the relevant Nodes and subnodes were at the bottom of the project tree, and now we've grouped them into uh, logical categories. Okay, then, and lastly, on Amber Tunnel Base is a, a request from our US customers. We have added uh, cubic yards, a volumetric unit, uh, which will be used on all the reports if you enable it here in the settings. So this is applied in the general settings of so file and options and then units. And under volume, you can specify your volumetric units. Okay, so Amberg profile. So we have now a new circularity or ovalization profile analysis. So we'll take a look at this now. So this is the uh, profile view of the analysis. And in the analysis node of the project tree, you can right click for if you have control profile plus uh, module and you can create a circularity analysis. And it will take the profile points and it will fit a circle to the points. So this is an independent analysis of the actual theoretical design. It fits the profiles, it fits the uh, circle to the points in a manner that minimizes the deviations between all the surface points. We then have the labels showing the deviation to the best fit circle. So it is not a deviation to the theoretical design, but a deviation to the best fit circle. And in addition, like our other analysis, we have the axis position. And we also have the least squares point, which is the center point of this best fitting circle with X, Y deviations from the axis position. So if we compare that to, for example, the measured versus design analysis with using the same data, you can see here that there's a shift in the data where it is reporting deviations, radial deviations to the actual theoretical design. Uh, that's not the case with the circularity analysis. We also have a new report template for this circularity analysis. It has both the graphical view, the profile view, and the tabular information on one sheet. If there are many more points on the profile, the table at the bottom of the sheet will spill onto the next page and so on. Here we also have the calculated radius because the radius, the calculated radius of the best fit circle can change obviously depending on the different profiles and the measurement the measurements. We have point ID column, and then we have a label to show where that point ID is in the context of the, the profile. And we also have the deviations to the best fit circle column as well. Okay, so that was the circularity analysis. Yeah, that's uh, useful for, for segmental tunnel linings. It's, uh, it was requested many times. And that is, uh, as I mentioned, is in the Control Profile Plus module. We have made, now moving on with the layer thickness profile analysis, we've made one small improvement, which is uh, in the settings of the analysis, you can now specify a, a maximum distance for which comparison and reference profiles are to be compared. So maybe this is best explained with a diagram. So if we consider our axis, this is a plan view looking down, and we have here 
a sequence of reference measure profiles measured at regular intervals. And then at a later stage, in a different construction stage, we then capture some more measurements. But for whatever reason, that the, the profiles are not on the same stationing range. We can now specify in the settings a distance to which you want to either include or exclude profiles to be compared against each other. In the previous version of Amberg Tunnel, this value was hard coded as one meter, but now you can specify the, the, the value that you want to use. So this is for measured versus measured layer thickness profile. Okay, so the next one, yeah, we made some small enhancements to the various uh, default reports that we have. So the first one here is the, uh, the tabular report for measured versus design for profiles. We have now added a, the profile name column to the, uh, to the default template. So the default Amber Tunnel 2.0 template, an additional column that you see here. And next we have for shafts. So for measure versus design for shafts, we have level information now displaying. So this is a, a shaft measured versus design report. So a shaft in Amber Tunnel is a, a strict, strictly vertical structure. So the, the starting axis, the easting and norting, and the ending axis, easting and norting values are identical. The only difference is the elevation. So we now have the, the level information of the profile showing in this report. For tubes, uh, this information for, for obvious reasons is, is not there. The level information that's shown here is an average value of all the measured points that make up this profile. Okay, so the, lastly, again, in the team of reports, we have included in the installation now of Amberg Tunnel, the TMS style measured versus design report. This was the predecessor of Amberg Tunnel 2.0, but we had many requests where, where users uh, still want to use this profile, this template type. And uh, previously you needed to manually uh, load it, but now it comes uh, as standard with, with Amberg Tunnel. And you can select it in the settings of the analysis under the uh, templates tab. Here's a, just a quick side-by-side -side view of, of parts of the report. Um, the Amber Tunnel style is the, the one on the left, that's the, the common style. And then the older, the predecessor, the TMS style is, is a different layout, but it also has some different values. For example, it's, it also includes the axis coordinates as well. Okay, so that is Amberg Profile. I will now move on to Amberg Geotechnics. We have a new radial displacement analysis. So this is a distance type analysis. So this is it here. So this is available in Geotechnics Plus module. If we take what it does is we take the surface points, your surface measurements, it projects that point perpendicular to the axis position and it calculates the distance between those points. So in the previous, in the, the other type of analysis, it's comparing one measured point to another measured point, or in the case of convergence, it's um, comparing one to the, the previous uh, epoch. This one is always comparing the, the new measured points to the axis position. And if we plot this information over time, then we have our standard um, displacement graphics. For this analysis, we needed to create a new measurement point type called radial center point, which you configure while you're setting up the geotechnical cross sections. Okay, so that's radial displacement analysis in geotechnics plus with Geotechnics, we've also made some changes to the visualization of the displacement graphics. So if the usual scenario was what you see here on the left-hand side, where you can define a alarm area, critical area, and warning area. And there are some cases, if you're using different 
symbols for the, the location codes. Sometimes the, the, the various symbols, depending on what color it is, is not so visible, especially if it's inside one of these warning um, critical areas. So now we can optionally choose to have a outline and a transparent uh, center to, to help visualize the, these location codes. So it's a small change, but hopefully a, a requested one, and hopefully it will improve the visualization of the, these reports. Okay, so uh, Amber tunnel scan now. So we have now undo and redo commands in the point cloud editor. So this is the first of many uh, changes we're going to make to the, the point cloud editor, and we're going to pay significant attention to this uh, going forward. Um, we have now the undo and redo buttons. So while you're using the various filters, the distance space filter from the theoretical design or the, the planes filter or, or any other filter for that matter, the polygon, for example, you can undo and redo the operation. So for example, in the previous version, if you made a mistake, the solution was to exit out of the, uh, the editor, lose your work, and then open it up and continue. Now you can just simply undo uh, and redo. Once you save the editor, then the filtered points um, are then permanently deleted. But yeah, this is the, the first of many uh, areas uh, that we're going to uh, we're going to overhaul this this uh, point cloud editor and the handling of point clouds going forward. And also in Amberg Tunnel Scan, we have improved the extraction process. So when you extract profiles from a scan analysis, extracted into a construction stage, we have improved the uh, how this profile is extracted. So the normal procedure for, for those of you who have the Tunnel Scan module and the Profile module, uh, you would process a scan, you would export a sequence of profiles into a construction stage, and then use the profile analysis to create a standard measured versus design or measured versus measured profile reports. Sometimes, uh, especially in, in, uh, on, on transitions or if there's a low resolution uh, point cloud, the points that you would expect to see on a given profile, sometimes it can miss some points uh, depending on the various, uh, on a number of different um, factors but now we have improved the process to to capture all the relevant points that, that you need on the profile so you should have a much uh, denser point cloud if you choose to have it uh, sorry a denser profile if you choose so to have a denser profile and any uh, areas where previously there may have been a small gap in the profile that should now capture the points if they exist okay so that is tunnel scan and now lastly on to Hamburg Navigator. We have uh, support now for the BLK360. Actually, we, we, the features and enhancements we're showing here is not all of them, it's just a select few. Uh, and I think we have included the handout, the release notes in this uh, webinar, which I, I, I hope you're, you're able to download. If not, they're available on our website. And, uh, you can download them from there, or of course, you can get in touch with us. So the Leica BLK laser scanner support. So it is configured in the same way as our other scanners. So the RTC 360 or the Faro scanner or, or the ZNF. It's, uh, you establish a, in the case of the BLK, you establish a, a, a Wi-Fi connection. So it's a local Wi-Fi connection between the tablet and the scanner. And it is very easy to configure. It's a, you can do it in a, in a matter of seconds, really, to configure this connection. And it works then with the same tasks that we have with our other scanners. So the blast round task, the line scan task, and the layer thickness scan task also. So at the moment, we support positioning the scan with the black and white method. We don't have, we have not implemented the APM positioning method at the moment. So the procedure with the black and white positioning method is to first run this task from Amber Navigator. So Amber Navigator completely controls the, the, uh, the scanner. And once the scan has completed, it will then automatically transfer from the scanner to Amber Navigator. 
And once that process is, is done, you are presented with this uh, view, this uh, intensity view of the of the scan, and you can either manually pick points, or if it the scan is clear enough, it may automatically detect the targets. But actually manually selecting the targets is very quick. Um, you can select three, three or more targets in, in a matter of uh, a few seconds, I would say less than 20 seconds. And once you select three or more targets, you can do it also with uh, just your, you don't need a stylus, you can just do it with your finger because every time you tap on the screen, it zooms in in an increment. And then you can use the forwards, backwards, up and down arrows to find, find place the, the crosshairs. So once you have picked the, the three or more targets, you can then do the in-field or in-tunnel uh, comparison to the design. Or, yeah, so the usual, like what we have in our previous, with our previous scanners, uh, you can view the data in the profile view, the 3D view, showing the deviations according to the color scale that you specified. This is the, the top-down view, the derolled or unrolled view of the tunnel as well. And once you transfer this data back to the office, again, either via the USB or via Navigator Cloud Sync, um, it will be available automatically in your project for creating uh, further analysis. So that was quite quick, but um, I hope you found it informative. We, uh, yeah, that concludes a quick, very, very quick overview of the features. But as I said, I, hope, I think uh, you have access to the release notes and, and we would be delighted if you, if you got in touch with us. <laughs> Thank you very much and um, have a great day, a great evening um, and uh, be ready for the third and last uh, release later this year. Bye for now. Bye.